Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So today I'm going to teach you guys how to basically face off the end of your muzzle on your air rifle in this case um, and recrown it without having to have a lathe or any other kind of special tooling to do this. Now, I've been doing things freehand lately um, and it's kind of like, oh man, I really want it more precision, but I don't have a lathe. So I got to thinking, well, a drill press and a lathe have a lot in common, you know. A lathe lies down, right, and you put the piece into the chuck, where a drill press is upright, and you got to mount it differently because you're not going to put the piece into the chuck. Now, you can't turn metal, of course, on a drill press, but you can certainly do your crowning work on a drill press. You're also going to need a belt disc sander or a disc sander, period. Um, of course, some drill bits. Um, you're going to have to do some fancy little uh, work on your drill press too at the same time. But let me first show you what we're going to do with the sander. So I'm going to bring the camera over here closer and give you guys some real good close up of exactly what's going to happen here. Now you can see from my uh, belt sander here, I've also got a clamp on the protractor. Now the protractor has to be set up exactly 90 degrees and your table surface to the front face of your sanding disc also must be at 90 degrees. No air space is allowed. It has to be 90. Okay. Now the reason why the protractor is clamped down is so this can't move which frees up my hand. This is kind of an odd shaped barrel that's going on here and uh, so we're kind of like well that's a little funky. Now, you don't want to drive the piece in, but what you want to do is to get it to just touch, okay, and just slowly turn as you're going, okay? And you don't want to remove a lot of meat, which is another reason why you don't want to jam into this. So let's do this part first. So now we've got this faced so that it's nice and flat at 90 degrees. Now we're ready to do the crown. Now, <clears throat> for you guys out there that mod your pellet guns like I do, when you're chopping a barrel length down to a shorter length, this is also going to be coming in really handy to be able to do this on the disc sander. Now someone's going to ask, well, why can't you do it on the belt side? Well, there's no support for one for the barrel, and you can't freehand hold this with the belt actually going downward. Okay, you have to have this sort of thing going on with the disc and you have to be able to hold it at a perfect 90 degrees. And don't put pressure down on the table when you're doing this. You've got to just lightly hold this, but with enough support against the protractor that the barrel isn't going to move out of the way on you and mess up your 90 degree cut. Okay, so on to the next step. The modified drill press. Now this is an 8 inch job mate drill press. Uh, I've had this for a while. Now you're going to need to have uh, a hole saw kit and you're going to need to cut about a 3 to 4 inch hole in the middle here into your table that you're mounted down onto and you need about an inch to an inch and a half hole in the middle. Now to mark your middle spot on your bottom of your table you can actually use a screwdriver for this and some nail polish. So if you have a spouse at home that has nail polish, steal some of hers. Don't tell her I said that though. Um, and you're going to put some on the back end of the screwdriver. Okay. Um, let me just find the, the screwdriver I was, well actually it doesn't matter which one I was using. You're going to need one long enough that you can put into the chuck. Okay. And get it clamped down. 
and then put just a little bit as close as you can to the middle in here because when you got it chucked up it'll be fine and it'll touch right dead center okay as long as your screwdriver is not bent that's for sure so make sure your screwdriver is good and straight before you do something like this now you're also going to need of course a variety of drill bits and you're going to need a drill okay in this case we're using a rigid uh, small drill let me just clamp that down um, and I've got a 29 piece kit of drill bits I would recommend starting out with the shortest and not the smallest stay away from these you don't need them but maybe even start with something this size throw it in and then you, you want to try and drill into there as best as you can now you know you're going to have lack of space on an 8 inch because your drill bits are going to get longer once you get up um, probably around to this size all right in which case we're looking at um, 7 16 you're going to want to go into the hole sideways and start rotating it to cut this away so use the drill bit to cut away with okay it will do it that's how i did it all right and then do that till you get all the way up to your half inch now you're going to need a half inch drill with a 3 8 shank very important uh, because you're dealing with a drill with a 3 8 if you have a drill that's not quite as long front to back as as this small rigid one um, then you can use that doesn't matter as long as it's you know a small drill like this so that you can actually fit up to a 3 8 taper in there and go around and do this and it doesn't have to be perfectly clear curl but try and get it as, as big as you can within this area okay not massively big but about an inch to an inch and a half an inch and a half is probably actually the best way to go now if you don't have machinist blocks i do of course because i i used to have a machine shop and i didn't get rid of everything uh, when i got out of it and i am going to get back into machining i kind of miss much of metal but these are great and handy okay but we're not going to do this on here we need things to be as flat as possible so you're going to need to drill a hole off the side here for the size of barrel that you're using okay so this may require a bigger drill depending okay or you can do the whole choo choo thing until you get the hole the size you need it now you're going to need some wood a couple pieces of scrap wood make sure they're flat okay and you're going to need some supports all right so what we're going to do with this is something like so See that we, we want to go a little bigger so put want this on this side now this is the bigger V groove you can actually take any piece of wood and make a groove in it to, to fit your uh, barrel do it on both sides if you want or just the one I would do just the one side because you do have to have a good positive clamp up for this okay so we need this for support because we need to raise our clamp up high enough so that it doesn't touch the surface and you want to try and get your clamp as even supported as possible into the middle of everything here so that when it all clamps together it'll stay where you need it now we need some height here obviously so i'm thinking maybe this should be a good height about here for this barrel this is just a scrap piece it's going to change depending on the barrel you're doing so this we're going to now check against the table we got a little bit of a wobble there so we need to get rid of that wobble That's actually pretty decent we should be able to hold that in place so now we're gonna be able to have the room here to move this around so what you want to do is get that sitting even about there now the cone here this is one of those Dremel cones okay and you want to make sure it's running concentric or circular even so when you spin it up 
you'll know if it's running even or not. That actually feels really smooth. Now, if you're concerned a little bit about the surfacing, you can actually resurface um, these things with some uh, heavy grit sandpaper. This is 80 grit. And just do this. And it doesn't take much. Sandpaper against the stone peels it back good. <coughs> okay, so now we've got all that set up. Now, when you tighten down anything in a drill press, you want to go through every chuck hole that's in your chuck and make sure each one is snug down. So each one of those jaws evenly grips with even pressure. Um, it's very important. A lot of people think, oh, I only need the one because it's a three-jaw chuck. No, you have to do three. Even on a metal lathe, you must do all available ports to make sure every jaw is clamped even. Anyways, so now we've got this. Now, this isn't a bad little bit of a wobble, but that's okay. We're not worried about that. It's all right. So what we want to do is get this to go in here evenly. And what we're looking for is to make sure that it's set. Now we want to hold this so that it doesn't move. And it shifted a bit. So we've got a little bit of a movement here still going on. We need to try and figure out, can we get rid of this? Maybe we go to this side. And no, that doesn't work for us. So we're back to the blocks again. So this time not so tight. That's actually much better. Now we'll get this evened up. We've got just a hair there. Okay, so because we have just a hair of play there, we're going to try something. So we've got to eliminate that movement. Okay. This is like shimming everything into place here. Now you'll know if you've got this because you won't see your barrel flex at all when you put this down. Now, you want the drill press to run at full speed, whatever that may be. In this case, it's 3150. Do not dive down into this. You only want to skim it very gently. So what we're doing is we're taking a look for the consistency of how concentric that went in. And it looks really, really good. Like I said, it doesn't take much. Very little to do a crown. So now we have that stage done. So now we can take this out of here. 
now you've got a little bit of a rough edge there that you need to get smooth because otherwise you're dealing basically with a burr that's going to happen, right? So we'll get rid of our stone. And which one's the lucky one today? We've got a 177 cow. This one should be okay. So. It's got a bit of a shake. do is find one that's spinning as concentric as possible. This is just rubber is what it is. It's just to clean it up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly because it's not cutting into the metal. It's just smoothing the edges out. Okay, we've got three other possibilities maybe. Too big. Ah, that should work good. Same deal, all three. Good stuff. All right. Now this isn't as critical for balance, but if you're concerned about it, balance it out anyway. Good raid about there. Bring this over just a little bit. Oh, it shifted. Get right there. Now this part you want to just feed it in a bit. It's gonna cut into the rubber. That's okay. thing you will find is that because you cut in with a stone it brings an edge up on this that is an easy fix with some very fine grit sandpaper this should be yep 400 now with this you just lay it on a flat surface just like this it's all the movement you need and just go in a circle like this don't put down a lot of pressure. Just let the natural weight just touch it. It's handy having a magnifier too. Good, that's nice and flat. We've got a really nice crown going on in there. Let me see if I can show you this on camera, guys. Hopefully we can do this. Mm, 
Maybe not. But you can see we got a, a really nice crown in there. It's nice and smooth and shiny. Doesn't look like we have any burrs. So it looks all right. Under the magnifying glass, check it really good. And we have no bird edges. So we should have a really nice crown, which means our gun is gonna shoot way more accurate. <coughs> So really, you don't have to mess with crowns too often on guns. Um, now, every time you do a barrel chop, of course, you have to. It's not optional. Um, but if you're not doing a barrel chop, um, you can just do a polish clean up on a muzzle. Um, no big deal. Uh, some guns, they have a very poor um, crown job to them. We all know Crossman is notorious for having some pretty bad crowning jobs on their stuff. Um, so in that case, I would take pretty much any crossman gun that seems to be acting up a bit and I would clean up, clean up the edge, face it, like reface it like we started with this barrel, face the edge of it, get that nice and flat, you don't have to take off much, and then recrown it. And you can do this all with a couple of little Dremel pieces and uh, like I said, just what we have here, you know, and you can do a really, really good quality crown job uh, without having to invest a lot of money either. I mean, even a 7x12 lathe, which is about what you'd need to cover um, most barrels, um, that's going to set you back like $1,000 Canadian, you know, right now. Um, if not more, I haven't been up to check the prices at Busy Bee lately. Um, but I am after a 7x12 lathe, not just for doing better, better crowning, but also to get back into doing mod parts uh, for myself and for everybody else who wants them. Um, but uh, being able to just do this for now until I can get a lathe, this is a big bonus. And my drill press is not affected because we are only messing with the bottom table. So it's not a big issue. And then we can still use this. Now, this is my uh, cross-light vise. It's about three, three and a half inch. Um, and I've got it set up on, on here, which was kind of tricky. But the way I have it set up, when I do, uh, like if I want to do like a custom transfer port uh, on a barrel, I can do that now with just this little setup here. It works great. And these JobMate drill presses have a very tight quill on them. I find they are way better than uh, even the Mastercraft drills. Um, you know, I had a 10 inch one and I really, the, the only thing I couldn't really do with it too much was anything that required uh, too much pressure on the metal. Drilling wood, no big deal, right? But drilling metal, you have to be really accurate and this press is extremely, extremely accurate because it's a very tight quill on it. Um, so basically <laughs> marginal to no movement, um, you know, so that actually works out really good this way. So I can use it for this, I can use it for crowning, I can use it for just regular jobs too. You know, I can unbolt this anytime I want or just throw it out of my way and, you know, do another project on here that, you know, I might need a longer drill bit or whatever. So, but that's how it's done guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell for notifications for when I do new uploads. Um, and uh, certainly stay in tune for a lot more gun stuff. Um, from, well, actually, pretty much from about this point on, I guess. Um, I am working towards getting a 7x12 lathe as soon as I can get one. I will be starting to produce mod parts again. Um, like I said, for myself and for others. And uh, we'll just continue on. But don't ask me to make any more gun grips because I'm not getting back into woodwork. Um, I'm really done with that. I'm getting to the point where my poor lungs can't handle it even with a mask. So I'd rather say what's, what I got in my lungs. So, catch you later.